When it comes to speedrunning, Roblox isn't usually the first thing to pop into everybody's heads, but it actually has a pretty large community behind it. And very recently, we saw another sub-community of that emerge from an old Roblox recreation of it, Good Blocks. Good Blocks had an event from the beginning of February to the 7th, where people would have to submit the fastest times they could in a selection of 7 different games. And the fastest of each game would win 700 good bucks and a checkered crown which wasn't able to be gotten anywhere else. This scrambled the community to get as many good times as they possibly could, which caused a lot of debate over the community as well. The whole idea of Good Blocks' Grand Prix was to ignite flames into speedrunning the game, because Roblox's old clients look similar to the newer ones, but they play so much differently. Like in 2009, you can trip just by hitting a ceiling within the first 10 frames of your jump, and it doesn't matter how large the ceiling is, hell, it could even be the top pixel of another Robloxian's arm! But what were the prizes? Well, for participating, you got 150 ticks and a checkered flag. In third place, you got the checkered flag and 300 good bucks. In second place, you got 500 good bucks, the checkered flag, and the checkered skateboard. And for winning outright, you get 700 good bucks, the checkered flag, the checkered skateboard, and most importantly, the checkered crown. So what exactly defined winning in this scenario? Well, it was pretty simple. There was a selection of seven different games, PH2, otherwise known as Phase 2, Halloween 2020, The Super Mega Fun Obby Course, Derailed, Escape the School, Tropical Lobby, and Downhill Smash. And winning meant getting first in one of these games. You didn't need to be first in the most or even get the most podium finishes. You just needed to finish first in one and you got the crown. But that raises some questions, because what if somebody places first, or at least second, twice? Well that's pretty simple as well, it goes down to the next quickest person. So for example, if you got third in Tropical Lobby, but the guy in first already got golden downhill smash, and the guy in second already got golden phase 2, then you would get the crown. A couple more rules to note is that you can't use endgame perks like pass or teleport in the new run. Hobby games start from the first frame you move and end when you hit the last spawn. Abusing hats to gain extra height is banned. Multiple people can do boss fights and time is counted in frames. So if you don't have a timer, they can always frame count it. Now for the next part, I'm going to break down each of the games in order of easiest to explain to absolute doozies. Starting with one of the more simple ones to explain. Tropical Lobby. I'm not going to break down every single minute detail of a run unless it's particularly impressive or meant something in the future. In the first day, Tropical Lobby was one of the more heated games, having about 6 runs submitted on that day alone, with the fastest being Vat Blue Yoshi. We're gonna start by covering this run because not only was it pretty fast overall, but really impressive that he got this day 1. You start with a collection of lava jumps that you have to leap across, and because of old Roblox's jump delay, it would make it so that you have to wait about a second between jumps. But a tactic Yoshi discovered was jumping in between the spaces whenever there was a corner to save an extra jump. And he could afford to lose those runs considering that the run was only beginning. Sections 2 and 3 were fairly trivial, but do note that he didn't go for the checkpoint to save a slight bit more time. He was really shaving off every little bit he could find early on. 
Part 4 was where he saved the most time. There's this section with checkered lava pieces that take about 14 jumps to get over. And considering that jumping has a 1 second cooldown, that's 14 seconds at the minimum. But Yoshi discovered how to push this lower, by using a piece of debris that could let him skip the entire section. Smart guy. Section 5 had no way to skip it, and he didn't try his shaving tactic from the beginning of the run, but Yoshi was already so far ahead from the checkers that he could afford to play it safe, and ended the run with a respectable 216. But then, somebody rather infamous decided to take it lower a day later. A guy who's rather infamous for getting high places in big events all the time. A guy who sends chills down anybody's spine if they try to beat him in any capacity at an event. And this guy's name was LEGO World 98. Remember everything that Yoshi did? Well, throw all that in the trash, because how much do you think LEGO World lowered the record? 5 seconds? 10 seconds? A minute? TWO MINUTES?! The answer is yes. He figured out that by placing somebody near the ad billboard at the beginning, and then somebody else on an off bit of scenery, he could use that to cheese the game and get an insanely fast shortcut to the end without doing any of the actual lobby, giving him a 19 second run and putting him MILES ahead of everybody. So that raises the question, who was going to beat him? He decimated everybody else with his sneaky discovery, but he wasn't perfect by any means. Well, there was one guy who was up to the task. Somebody who's just as infamous as LEGO World. Somebody who has one of the highest numbers of KOs on the entire website, and somebody who is the most love him or hate him user on, on the entire platform. And his name is Kadaskeri. Kadaskeri had a bit of a rivalry going with LEGO World, because every time he would try to do an event, LEGO World would deny him near instantly. But this was the one time where Kadaskeri decided that he had enough. And he was going to mess with LEGO World this time. So he got to one of his friends and started grinding for a time so perfect that LEGO World wouldn't dare to try running the game again. And he came out with a time of 16 seconds. And you know what? It worked. Afterwards, everybody looked at that run and decided, this is too ridiculous, I'm not going to touch that. And then decided to start running the game legitimately to see who could get the fastest non-cheese time instead. So, it seems like Cadiz Gary was a surefire winner. But then, literally an hour before the event ended, something tragic, well at least from Cadiz Gary's perspective, happened. It was incredible. In the last hour, a group of friends that all followed LEGO World all got a time that decimated Katascari's 16 second run. One man getting a 14 second run, and another getting a 13. Pushing Katascari down to third, meaning that he didn't just miss out on the crown, he also didn't even get the skateboard. I don't really know how to react to this myself. Do I feel bad for Katascari? or impressed that something this impressive got pulled off an hour before the event ended. I guess I'll never know for sure. My god, that was only one of the games. Imagine how much crazier some of the other games would get if that was the least hard to explain. Downhill Smash was the run that most people entered, but it's also the one that I have the least to talk about, apart from one run, which I'll get to. Because it's the shortest speedrun out of all the games, what a lot of people would do day one is that they'd be fully aware that they couldn't get a high tier time, even if they could, so they'd just submit a run on the game that could be completed the fastest, which was Downhill Smash. 
And if you don't believe me, then maybe you would be convinced by the 16 runs in a day. The time heading into the 6th was very slowly increasing. It started at about a minute and then slowly crawled up to 42 seconds. Which begged the question, who was going to get the sub 40 run? Well that's when a guy named Stotts decided to start a run. And it was on an incredible pace. He aimed completely straight, none of the cars hit him, and he was ascending like a madman. To the point where the estimated time was a 39 second run, which was exactly what he wanted. But then, when he was at the very top of the mountain, he got hit. <laughs> His amazing looking run got denied by bad RNG at the last second, and Sub 40 would have the wait. Also, everybody fought. When Stotts got hit, his arm bounced to the top of the map and activated the team changer. The hitbox of it isn't very small, it's actually the size of the whole top part. But from that distance, not only was that a complete 180 with his luck, but it also saved about a second as well, bringing him from an estimated 39.54 to an absolutely incredible 38.27 which absolutely invalidated anybody else's attempts, and it locked in his victory. Now the crazy part about all of this is that the modern Roblox engine actually slows down this run due to the ramp not being as modern Roblox physics engine friendly. The world record for the modern climb is 51 seconds.9, meaning that Stotts not only got the fastest time in the event, but also in the world. And to that, Mr. Stotts, I salute you. Escape the School was the last game to have more than 10 runs submitted for it, meaning that it was one of the games to get the most attention. But similar to Downhill Smash, I don't have much to say about it. Though I still do have a bit more to say about it than I did for Downhill Smash, if you count the amount of runs worth discussing, rather than how much happens in them. So let's dive right in. Funnily enough, the very first run to be submitted was a 154 by Mr. Hollywood 2123 and this was an impressive run mainly because of how fast it was done. It took until the very end of the day for somebody to get a time that was close to that. But who was that person? Well, I think you know that name by now. That's right, Katascari's back! Before he found out about the run in Tropical Lobby, he was mainly playing a lot of other games around it. And Escape the School was no exception. And when Cat Scary submitted his run, he also got a sub 2 minute time, with 1 minute and 56 seconds. It wasn't enough to beat Hollywood, but it put him in second place. Only for CVB to beat both of them a day later. Man, Cat Scary can't catch a break. The only other thing I really have to add to this game was the run that ended up winning by a user simply called 200. Why would I bring it up? Because in my opinion, this is the cleanest run that was submitted in the entire event. I can't really find any big time saves he could make. In fact, he was very close to a sub 140 as well. So if there's any run I recommend you watching after this video, it's gonna be this one. I did say it was only longer by quantity of runs, not the quality of them. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the most confusing shot I've ever seen in my entire goddamn life. Only four runs, none of them actually being it. I cut over ten minutes for a good speed run, except for the use of intentional skins that only two people actually use. Unfortunate checkpoint that too much bullshit for it to not make this video 50 years long. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to break character for a second. It's just that trying to explain the super mega fun hobby drives me to drink. Now. <clears throat> Most of the games I've talked about previously I haven't had too much to talk about. But the rest starts from somewhere confusing. Because there's a specific event that happened that linked every other game's runs. So I'll explain the one that I brought up. Now. Let's talk about Derailed. You might be questioning why there's very few speed runs of Derailed. And it's actually pretty simple. It's because <laughs> Okay, I promise I'm not
not gonna break character like that again. <laughs> I promise that's gonna be the last time. The primary reason as to why nobody wanted to speedrun Derail is because it wasn't a game that was meant to be speedrun. It's a kart riding game that punishes speed rather than rewarding it. It's completely baffling why Ezra even added it to the list of games. Was it to pay respect to Jika? Who would even go for it? Well, two people were up to the task. Arephus and Rainbow Soft. Arephus was the first person to strike with his run, getting a not so impressive 455 after losing a life in the Yolo section, but later cleared it up with a 415. I would show you gameplay footage, but he deleted all of his footage after the event ended for no reason whatsoever. But why Arephus? But, but there, there was no reason to do that. But Rainbow Soft was silent. He wasn't saying anything to anybody. It was very clear that he was grinding for the perfect run, but the amount of luck that you would need to get a perfect run of Derailed was immense. God knows how much time would be saved and how long it would take. And then one day later, Rainbow Soft did this. Please, please, I want to be free of this pain! Go! Go, please! Yes! Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Throughout the entire run, there was only two time-slowing mistakes that were out of his control, and they only cost him a total of seven seconds. He accidentally tripped at the timed rails, and his cart slowed down after it for no reason at all. But apart from that, and a very small lag near the end, the run was perfect. Only two days in, Rainbow Soft had a shot at getting the crown. And this was the only run he'd done so far. The next day, Rainbow Soft wrote a letter to convince Erebus to speedrun a different game like Halloween 2020, mainly because he didn't want anybody else to go through the pain and suffering that was the Derail speedrun, let alone to take down his own run, and he listened. The 415 he submitted was the fastest run he submitted for the game. The next day, however, someone else stepped up to try and challenge it. You know his name! It begins with a C! Kinda scary! Kinda scary was in the middle of a run, and a decent one at that. It had the pace to get something good. But then something interesting happened in the middle of the run. Rainbow Soft joined in the middle of the run, and he had a panic attack at the thought of somebody else doing a run. What Rainbow Soft didn't realize was just how solid of a time 338 was and that Kataskari wasn't specifically farming for it because Kataskari's best time was 4 minutes and 35 seconds so clearly this was a big phew moment from Rainbow Soft. This may seem really unorthodox but for now I'm going to cut to Halloween 2020. It will make sense later! Halloween 2020 was the least random game out of the entire collection and to be honest with you I don't know why. There's nothing offensive about the run and it's fairly straightforward to do, so I don't get why it has so little attention. Nonetheless, the attention it did get was only by two speedrunners. Arivus, who went to speedrun the game because of Rainbow Soft's domination and derailed, and Stotts. But wait a minute. Stotts already had a run where he came first. <laughs> This meant by playing a game where the only other person who was running it had already won something else, Arithus had sealed his chances for getting a crown by barely doing anything. And I think that's pretty humorous and smart, so all the more power to you, Arithus. Anyways, back to the rail. This is where shit gets bizarre. So please, everybody, make sure that you have all seven seatbelts buckled because we're about to enter hyperspeed. After Rainbow Soft's amazing time on Derailed, he felt the need to comment on the crown boasting how good of a time it was. But all it took was one comment from somebody not even competing to change everything. This caused Rainbow Soft to panic, and a day later when everybody was clumped into one place, 
he went to a full server of Happy Home to do some research. Rainbowsoft also written a letter asking Regen what he meant by little did Rainbow know. And he replied, Dog, I'm not even the one who got the run. Which only made everything worse. Like, what did he mean by that? Who was getting the run? What was being planned? After 10 minutes of discussing, Kadaskeri eventually told him that the person he was referring to managed to find a trick to skip the entire derailed speed run, but this was using the hat glitch, which was strictly forbidden. So you may think this is where it ends, right? Well, no. Because also in that server was LEGO World 98, and he overheard everything. I didn't like the way Rainbow Soft was referring to everything, eventually getting to the point where he decided, FUCK IT! I'M GONNA USE EVERY BIT OF MY POWER TO TRY AND STOP YOU FROM GETTING THAT GODDAMN growl, Or something along the lines of that. And at that very moment, the Discord was split into three categories. Neutral, Lego Cheerers, and Rainbow Cheerers. Lego World 98 had an absolute army of friends, so almost everybody was following him, with only a couple people helping Rainbow Soft. As the Discord was starting to lose it over both of these people, they both did different things. Rainbowsoft stayed on the rail just in case anybody from LEGO's side tried to start a run, while LEGO World started grinding runs on Phase 2 while he was distracted, and he found that the next thing he would go for was the rail. So while Rainbowsoft was nervously defending on the game, what got affected by this movement? Well, all the effects in the last bits of time were favoured to LEGO World. He got everybody to screw Kataskeri in the last hour, which we already talked about near the beginning of the video. He kept Rainbowsoft on edge for the entire day, and as for LEGO World himself, he had a record to set. Phase 2 was a weird speedrun, because you didn't run the entire game. Instead, all you ran was the final clockwork boss fight, considering that was the most iconic part of the game. And, here's the kicker, multiple people are allowed to help you in any boss fights, according to the rules. The best time on the game before LEGO World started grinding on it was 1 minute and 3 seconds by Hunter, the same guy you got first in the Tropical Lobby, very closely followed by S. Micah by less than a fifth of a second. So how much could LEGO World lower the record? I don't know, by 10 seconds? Because of the army that LEGO World had on his side, there was really nothing that Rainbowsoft could do to prevent, even if he wasn't camping on the rail. The people in the group just did that much damage in that fast of a time that there was no possible way that anybody, not even somebody putting down everything in their life to try and prevent them, could stop them. So who won the bout? It's really difficult to decide. LEGO World had an amazing final day with a bunch of last second times, but Rainbowsoft barely had anybody on his side and managed to keep the earliest lasting run in the entire event even when an entire group of people were hawking him down. So who did better? I'll leave that down to a straw poll at the end of the video. game in the Good Blocks Grand Prix discussed. What did I think of it? Well, I had fun. It was really stressful, but it was a cool thing to be stressed about, and it gave me the first huge pop-off I ever did over a speedrun. But I think we shouldn't really be looking directly at the crowns, but more at the feats of what happened during the runs themselves, because some baffling and incredible stuff was discovered about the game in this short time. Loads of friends were made, loads of enemies were made, loads of flags were given, and people had fun. And hey, if Ezra ever decides to make a good blocks Grand Prix 2, maybe I'll give that a try as well.